Hello world! Today I'll be showing off the progress of my Iron Man Heads Up display and discuss my future plans. But first, welcome to the 124th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. This is the 14th video in my Shane update playlist. Uh, so make sure you've watched my previous videos by clicking on the playlist card here. Uh, in my 100th video, I laid out my plan on all the capabilities that Shane will have. Uh, you can watch that video by clicking here. But basically, I have a command-driven digital assistant like Alexa or Siri. And uh, it's separate from the heads-up display and neither are connected to my network's attached storage or what I imagine is the brain. So um, my command driven assistant uh, is uh, that video is doing extremely well. People are interested into that and I got my first GitHub fo uh, followers and that is on my laptop. The goal is to get that into a Raspberry Pi that's connected to my network attached storage. And that's where most of the files that it uses will be on. But also, I want to be able to put this heads up display I'm working on on a future, uh, you know, some sort of wearable, maybe not an Iron Man helmet, but something. But it can also connect to my command driven assistant. And then all of it's connecting to the brain. So that's my future goal. Um, but for now, uh, let's check out what I've currently done and see the progress. So I have this random video scene right here with just a random background. And it has the date and time you've seen that and this little overlay that has the power. Now in the previous video, when I unplug the battery, it would go to a battery symbol and say you have X percent of battery remaining. And so for the purpose of this video, um, I took out the words because that's uh, a Reddit user had a very good point that that's a lot of stuff on your heads up display. So I took that out. So let's check this out. I'm going to unplug the power. And right now um, I have 98% remaining. And so that has dropped down. Now that's not an accurate, you know, description of 98%, but I did wanted to show um, what it has. So I only have this uh, programmed right now. So when I plug that back in, I'll have AC power. But the eventual goal is to have many pictures uh, that it will draw from. So if it's above 90% or 80, and then I want it to be red when it gets below uh, 25%. Okay, and then the other thing is the Gmail. So I had this little Gmail down here and it said you have one unread messages in text. Again, that's not modern and nor is it useful if I'm actually wearing the helmet. So now, um, as you can see, I have zero unread Gmail messages because there's nothing in my screen. So let's go to my Gmail and mark one as unread. Okay, so by the time we get back, you see that I have one unread message. Let's do another one. Mark unread two. And that's all I programmed. If it's any more than that, then it will just turn into this plus sign. So in reverse, mark is red. Two. Mark is red. One. And then mark this is red. None. Okay, and then that's pretty much it, except I did add one thing, is if I press the F button, you should see you press the F key. See that? Oh, it's really quick. It says you press the F key. So eventually this will fire the missiles of my Iron Man suit. No, I'm just kidding. But if you uh, watch the Iron Man movies, sometimes he presses something on his helmet 
that makes the heads up display doing. So this is just a small example. If I were to press a button on a keyboard or just a push button that's connected to a Pi, I can draw text or make OpenCV do something. Okay? So that's my progress so far. Um, you know, I definitely need to consider the effectiveness of this code in OpenCV because while I'm recording this video and while I'm uh, running this camera, my laptop is about to explode. So uh, if I do some more advanced OpenCV like with um, object detection, uh, definitely need some more computing power that maybe a Raspberry Pi might not be able to handle. But we'll see. So I'm not going to go over all the old code. This is all old, old code. Um, this settings file is my own code that I've created that gets the power status, gets the date, the width and height of the screen, the actual resolution. And I've covered this in my previous videos. Um, the Gmail, I'll leave a link to that playlist in the description. It's my most popular playlist on my whole channel. Um, this, nothing is new here. I can, uh, in a previous video, I showed how to save the video, but I blanked all that out. Um, nothing new here. However, when I get to here, this is where I changed it. So in my custom check power status, I get a percent now instead of a string that says you have X percent. If we were on 100 and my laptop never gets to 100 while I'm using it, it will show this picture. Right, battery power image equals CV2.IM read battery 100. It'll look like this, right? Completely full. Else, and that, like I said, I only programmed it twice just for you, uh, the audience. It would look like this. Now, I'll probably need a 90, an 80, and so on and so forth. And if I go to my heads up display, I'm basically making these in PowerPoint. So here is my initial uh, right here, 100%, you know, 70, maybe 50, maybe 25%, and then I save it as a picture. Same with the little Gmail logos that you saw. I just made those myself. Okay, so that, but notice how this has the same variable, right? If it's 100, the battery power image will be one of these and then maybe I'll have like 10 of them and then the code is the same as the other one right so that way you only have to do an if else on one variable and then the code is the same right we make a small battery power image by using OpenCV's resize and then I made it 30 by 30 pixels then we make it a logo by attaching it to a color CVT color of BGR to BGRA and the reason why we do that is so we can build this overlay. Again, I'm not going to go into this. Same thing with our Gmail. So if the mail notification, and in my Gmail, the mail notification is an integer of how many unread messages I have. If the mail notification equals zero, we're going to pass this entire block. And what that does is as you saw there was no logo at all if it's anything else so one or greater it's going to show this gmail icon it's going to make it small it's going to make it a logo then it's going to add it to an overlay so i'm on my second overlay now and as i discussed in my previous video i don't know if this is the correct way to do that if it's correct to add a bunch of overlays um, am I going to have overlay 15? Is that going to cause more computing process? So if any OpenCV experts have ideas, I'm open to them. So if the mail notification equals 1, then it's the same logic as I already showed you. We're going to use this one mail picture like that, that I made in PowerPoint. If it equals 2, we're going to use this 2 mail. And then I'll probably add a maybe a 3 and a 4... And any more than five just uses this more mail, right? We have a bunch of mail. And then we make a small mail count 
make it 20 pixels again give it the CVT color and then I'm on my third overlay but this time I add it slightly offset than this right here so this is the Gmail icon I'm taking the frame width I'm taking J which is the pixels of the logo and then adding it to the frame width which is you know the width of the open CV frame and then minus 200 to make it move left in this case I'm only moving it 160 so the size of the logo plus then moving it 160 so if you minus the frame width it's going to the left so if I just put J plus 160 it would take the size of the logo plus 160 and then that's my third overlay okay so that's how I draw those overlays the next thing I showed was if I press the lowercase f so we're going to establish just like you establish the escape down here this is where I'll put all my key handling so you take the key so key equals cv2 dot weight key this is a delay and then I'm not sure what this is to be honest I just saw it in a code and then OpenCV uses the ASCII table to assign keys specifically uh, the decimal so if we go here so this is the ASCII table and we're looking for this lowercase f and the decimal equivalent of f is 102 so if key equals 102 which is lowercase f from the ASCII table that is a huge ad from the ASCII table right here 102 equals F then we're going to CV2 put text onto the frame you press the F key which launches the missiles then to get it centered um, this is 150 pixels I did that by experimentation so I take the video width which is the width of the uh, open CV I make it an integer first then divide that by 2 which gives me the center but if I use that this Y would be in the center not the words so you minus the pixel of this and that's how you center it on the width the height is just the video height divided by 2 the font is like Hershey complex or something which I'm probably want to change and we define that uh, way up here font equals CV2 dot font Hershey simplex um, 0.7 uh, I believe is the thickness oops we're down here 0.7 is the thickness I've been using the blue color is supposed to be some sort of digital blue um, not sure what the one is the pixel width I believe and CV2 dot line 4 is the type of line that I'm using and that's it everything else is um, old code that we've showed before so I know that's not a lot of progress but um, it is taking the inputs directly specifically from the OpenCV Reddit so thank you for commenting and if you have ideas on how I can improve this code or where I should go from here please leave a comment um, please subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching me wa uh, build this Iron Man heads-up display or my digital assistant and thanks for watching goodbye world